Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 35 to 40. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the third week of Easter. St. John writes, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's from John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40. It leads us to think of faith in divine love. <clears throat> you know, it is often said that man is made for love, and that without love he will wither away or fail to flourish. A child has lost his parents through war or natural disaster, and he is placed with the best of intentions in an institution where he will receive whatever care and upbringing proves to be possible. But he received little personal affection there and grows up inwardly stunted with a trail of problems in tow. Again, how great is the happiness when a young man or woman meet a future spouse to whom is given and from whom is received love. How great the trauma if the promising engagement is suddenly broken off. It can be absolutely devastating and serious counselling may be required in order to regain a normal footing. What is involved here is love, that love for which man is made and for which he or she yearns. But to say this is not sufficient because the love he receives or gives could be based on a false foundation. One of the most powerful elements in a mafia culture and in many terrorist cells is the bond of friendship that reigns therein. The dependence on that friendship can be extremely difficult to break and yet it is founded on falsehood and sin. It is an immoral friendship that violates truth and it will not bring the happiness which love promises. So man is called not just to a life of love and friendship, but to a life of love in the truth. Supremely, it is the truth revealed by God in Jesus Christ. We are called to live a life of love in that truth, which is the triune God, the God of infinite love. This is the true meaning of the ordinary need which all experience for love, a love which should always be in the truth. Now, what is the greatest manifestation of love in the world? <clears throat> Some would say it is married love, <clears throat> a great manifestation indeed. But what has God revealed? The greatest manifestation of true love, God's love for us, is the person of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Christ is the revelation of the Father and of his love. In Jesus Christ is to be found every heavenly blessing. The fullness of the Godhead resides in him, and this gift, Jesus Christ, is the loving gift of God to our fallen world. This brings us to our gospel passage I read earlier, <clears throat> from John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40, because in speaking of faith in himself, our Lord tells us more of the love of the Father for man. The Father's love is manifested precisely in his drawing man to belief in his divine Son. Our Lord tells those of his audience 
who do not believe that all that the Father gives me will come to me. So the one who believes in Jesus is a gift from the Father to his divine Son. His very faith leading him to come to Jesus is the Father's gift. It is a gift springing from the Father's love for his Son and also for the one who, in believing, is given to Jesus. Christ promises that he himself, I quote, shall lose none of all those that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. The Christian is profoundly grateful for the faith in Jesus which he has been granted. It was implanted in him as a supernatural gift of baptism, confirmed in him in the sacrament of confirmation, and is nourished by the preaching and sacraments of the Church, particularly the sacraments of penance and Eucharist. As he becomes more and more conscious of his faith in and love for the Son, ever growing during the years of life, he ought to see this faith as the gift of the Father's love. My very faith in Jesus and his word granted to me and nourished in me through the life and ministry of the church is the expression of the Father's love for me. It is a foretaste of the eternity to come because our Lord says, I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. How sad to allow this faith which takes us to Jesus to wilt and become dormant through neglect and sin. It is the foundation of eternal life and the key to heaven. Divine faith, that supernatural gift which is bestowed by the Divine Spirit, is the pivotal endowment from on high. Let us be very aware of our faith in Jesus Christ, expressed in a full and hearty acceptance of his teaching, and let us understand its divine origin. It is the gift of God's love, and its distinguishing note is precisely faith in God's love. Christ loved me, St. Paul writes, and gave himself for me. St. Paul was able to say this because he had received the gift of faith and he lived by it. Let each one of us do the same.